As the 70s roll in, stability around the world has never been as shaky. Interplanetary alliances join together to seek ideological supremacy across both planets. Cultural shifts are uprooting norms that have been in place for centuries. Technological shifts have been changing how the world itself functions. As these shifts occur, life continues in the seed bearer region, where a seemingly random group of people have come together to try and make sense of the nonsensical. This is Hazeltown Story. I am Carnival. I'll be portraying Claudie Lupin, thief extraordinaire wannabe. I am, of course, Deathmaster 780. I will be playing Bobby, a businessman, and also probably Nellos Masters, a uh, death obsessed sort of associate of the group. I am a Torpotypus, and I'll be playing Aravia. She's a big dumb cow who can punch a hole in a man. Okay, so now that you're done with that, uh, I'll say that that is the start of that is the first part of the day done. Uh, so now you get your uh, your afternoon downtime stuff. So, uh, Carnival, what do you want to do for downtime? Let's double work on the finding the uh, getting those finances. All right, give me a double. Give me two rolls. Five, so that's two. Okay. okay, so you roll a one and five for your first roll, so that's going to be a two more. And Ooh, that's only one. That's a failure, so that's one. Uh, that's roll two and a two. Uh, so you get up, you get three more. Oop. All right, there we go. Okay, uh, DM. Uh, Bobby is going to just uh, training some cunning some more. All right. Also, I'm going to use efficiency and motion so I can get three experience points. Hold on one sec. Um, efficiency and motion. Which one was that? Oh, there we go. Yeah, it gives, an extra, down, yeah, it gives an extra cool. downtime action, right? Yep. Oh, because you so you got low enough. OK, so you got enough so that now you're you have the thing of fishing emotion, which is downtime. Due to your careful planning, you may give yourself an one. Uh, you may give yourself or a crew member one more downtime activity during downtime. That is, I forgot that that's even in there. Originally from leadership, I think. That or that leader. sounds about right. Okay. Um, in that case, um, turbo. Not the right number. Um, sorry, give me a sec. I itchy. Um. What am I looking at here? What do, what do I have? Something I wanted to do. I mean, you could always help out on the project if you have. No- uh, I was right. actually going to, but in my own way. You see, right. now that we have a, because we know who like did the construction work on the building, correct? Since we uh, looked at the blueprints and everything. E- you would have that information, yes. Hell yeah! Let's use friends in the field, baby. Let's do some research. Um. Ooh. Also, for reference, uh. I have to step up a second because I wanted to check something. The mechanics guide four to five rolled on a long term project is three progress, not two. Ah, I forgot. So you so you have completed the finance or the research in the finance of the Singway family. Uh, Let me find roll 20. There we go. So this can be deleted. So uh, from your research. You can tell that the Singway family's been, they are uh, definitely, um, they're not rich, per se. Uh, They are, I mean, they are, well, okay, let me phrase it this way. Um, They're definitely upper middle class uh, in terms of, like, it from a worldwide standpoint. Um. Most of their family is located in Springwood Isle. Um, they uh, have, they're mostly, um, they're, they are definitely upper middle class. Um, the single, like, from what you can tell, uh, especially from the fact that uh, Lynn's family moved back to the Springwood Isle, um, they were not able to really uh, like staying in the seed bearer region uh, due to their more, um, let's call it, uh, 
due to a more equitable economy, so to speak, um, they have kind of realized that they are not going to want to stay in the region uh, like because they were not making as much money as they could in Springwood. Uh, so they went back, although Lind wanted to stay in the area, so um, they gave her uh, ownership. Um, uh, you can tell that uh, there was a change from uh, the registration for the house in... You can see that there was a point in which there was uh, a note on there that the house was almost um, reclaimed uh, by the seed bearer like government due to misuse because if if she was the only one living in that house then that is way too big a house for one person uh, so she was almost lost that uh, lap until she uh, transferred it over to a multi how like a multi-family house uh, where a bunch of people were living and then she was able to keep it um Lynn's financials are pretty stable. Uh doesn't look like she in particular is like she would be middle class, so to speak. Um but yeah, you can tell that she herself is not rich, but her family is. All right. Uh was there anything other that you were like specifically kind of looking into for that? I mean, any crimes, but it seems like the only crime is trying to invade taxes. Um, yeah, you'd you'd find some maybe looking into evading of taxes by the CBR government by like people who lived like her family members. Uh, her herself, no. All right. Uh, she has not been in the region like for that long, and just from what you can tell, that she really doesn't have really a whole lot of history anyway. Like, she's been pretty straight-laced. Okay, yeah, Torpor, you're going to go talk to the others, the, like, the... I was going to talk to the construction crew and ask around about uh, the construction of the building itself and if there were any weird requests or anything like that. Um, anything that wouldn't be marked on the blueprints. I actually, uh, if you want, I can actually give you a better uh, thing, contact. Yeah. I can, uh, why don't you talk to Cass, who... Oh, yeah. Uh, tr is electrical and trade. So, and like his crew is working on the house now. Okay, yeah, because so, once again, friends in the field, chosen vocation, construction. That's why I figured. Yeah, that, and that's close enough. All right. Uh, so, okay, so you, let's just say you call up Cass and just decide to have like a, like, I don't know, just a quick meeting. Uh, and then. A little sit down, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, so, let's just say, I don't know, Cass swings by the, the office. And it was like, uh, Cass just walks in and was like, hey, you uh, wanted to chat. Yeah, so we might have a client soon, and I'm a little bit curious about, about their whole weird building situation and the magic involved, and I know you guys are supposed to be working over there, so I was wondering if you had a... Uh, there's anything weird or off about the place, aside from it just being ugly. Um, that anything that wouldn't be caught on the blueprints. It's a house. You really need to go in there to see it. It's it's an old. It's definitely old in the design. Uh, considering that um, where the uh house originally was, uh, then or like how that family has decided to keep the house, then mm. uh, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, like. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, deal with technical issues on the side. Um, Eric's a bitch. Yeah, let's uh, hopefully want Craig. Hopefully, as long as Craig's still there. Um, so, um, what was I? I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, so yeah, it, it's just a weird house. Like, there's like, there's like weird like jewels kind of like implanted in weird places. Uh, it's like. It's really hard to describe. Uh, it's just, you, I don't know, you, like, it's a very old design house. Um, and she, the fact that she just keeps, like, just her study, it's just a bunch of, like, different, like, a lot of books and a lot of, like, weird orbs 
and like I don't know exactly what it's for and just like no, ornamental it's, daggers. That's a hazard guess. It's that magic is stored in the balls. Uh, I guess. Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, it just sounds like some normal old blood wizard shit. I mean, uh, you said the house is old, like what, four hundred? Yeah, the design almost seems four hundred, but yeah, um, from an electr electrical standpoint, it or like from a like a wiring standpoint, it's actually fairly modern. Like we were able to like put in their new thermostat in pretty easily. Um, uh, there is it's just a very large house too. Also, not the kind of like. Lind puts on like very fancy lady, um, but the it's actually surprising once you like get into like the other people that are living there, a lot more traditional, so to speak, uh, a lot more uh, what you would find from a um, like a younger person. Like Lind's not that old, but. Um, I would say, like, just these, like, a bunch of people that just got out of college. Yeah, oh, so pretty damn young. Okay. Uh, out of curiosity, what kind of person is the lady of the house, anyway? Uh, she is an interesting person. Um, very, uh, very prim and proper, although Ugh. once you kind of get her talking, she gets more animated as she talks um and i would imagine i don't have that much experience with her but i'd imagine that she'd be uh judging from what i've seen of the place around not to uh, you know judge or anything but uh looks like those cr the people living there can party yeah, um, this this sounds more like my kind of place um so uh, Cash just kind of—I take Cash just sitting there, and Cash just kind of leans back. Now, I might be violating uh, a little bit of a, you know, a coda, but or something to speak, but um, to not dish on things that we've seen. But uh, yeah, I think that they um, I swear it like this seems like I just from what you can smell, it looks like um, they might be doing some distillery down there. They have a basement that is weirdly finished slash unfinished. That they just have rooms down there that are just nothing in them, but you kind of go in there and you can smell stuff. Like something's brewing down there. Oh, good. Okay. I'll keep that in mind, too, and I appreciate the help. Yeah, there's just... There is a... I, from what I can tell of her, she's very prim and proper on the outside, but I can tell you that she's probably just as much of a party girl as probably a lot of other people her age. Also, I do want to just add really quick that once again, Aravia said they look, they sound young as hell, but Aravia herself just looks like she's in her mid to late twenties. Yep. Just clarifying that because it hasn't been mentioned in a while. Yep. Cass is just used to it. <laughs> Well, once again, thanks a bunch for the help. Every little bit counts, especially since, you know, Bibli might be at risk here. But Cass looks a little bit more because I was like, yeah, I don't think that if she does happen to find a cross, Bibli, that she'd do really any harm. But I mean, I look, really she don't was want... with Lila at one point. I can't imagine she's a terrible person or anything. Yeah, I, yeah, but still, I'd rather not take the chances. No, it's fine. Once again, every little bit helps. We're going to be meeting her soon anyway, so. All right. Well, later. Have a good one, Cass. Thanks a bunch. All Remember right. Confidant Cass. Yep. All right. Um. So. All right. So that was one of your actions. Did you just want to put XP in the other? Yeah, just just I'm going to level up investigate one day. All right. Well, you're almost there. One more XP and I'll do it. Yeah, if only I didn't talk to Cass. <laughs> All right. Well, you'll get a downtime action after we have this conversation. So I take it that uh, in the evening, we just want to kind of deal with talking to Lind. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, DM, you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. So, yeah, I take it that. So four o'clock, 
rolls around and you all go to Bobby's burger place. Um, I take it, is there anything that you want to do beforehand? Nah, uh, not really. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just, I'm going in. All right. Nope. <clears throat> okay, so, um, you, so, you all just go in, and I take it you all sit at a table. Mm. Or is there, or do you want to do, do you want to, do, or how, how do you want to do this? We'll sit at a table. Uh, it's a bit less weird than forcing her to pile into a booth with us. Nah, I'm going to sit whatever table that Aravia and Darren are going to sit at. Well, if Darren's not at the table, whatever. I'm sitting at with Aravia. Oh, that's right. I forgot that Darren was going to be there, too. Um, so, yeah. Sort of. Oh, how, how are you kind of expecting this? Or how are you, what were you thinking of how doing this? Uh, Bobby was going to have Darren wait at the bar while he talked to uh, her first. Okay. Okay, so um, I guess Theron gets in the position. You all are sitting wherever you're sitting. Um, and well, Bobby at the waiter disposition for her to show up. Okay, so you're standing there and then um, you see someone walk in and you don't have to uh, think about it. You have like a 99% chance that it's her. Um, so when they were saying large personality, um, like walking, so walking in very um, prim and proper uh, is a very tall. Uh, we're talking like I think I think I ever down is like six four. Damn, she's uh, she, taller than Aravia. Uh, she is a dragonkin woman, so she is humanoid in looking, although she has more pointed ears uh, and a like tail. Very long, flowing, or like she has a long braided red hair, like very fiery red hair. Uh, like we're talking Adolf Kristen hair. Mm. Uh, and by large, I mean, like we're talking like, uh, think Cass Elliot, like that kind of structure. <laughs> I, that's lost on me. I yeah, put I a picture in there. Oh, okay. Still don't get the reference, though. Well, have you ever heard of a band called the Mamas and the Papas? No. no. I don't have anything to add. <laughs> There's nothing no. I can say then. Um, I hate yeah, it. So she was a. I hate how I know of her? It, it, is it the fact that she died choking? No, it was Scooby Doo movies. She oh, appeared. Okay. Yeah, yes, she would be, yes. And yes, unfortunately, Mama Cass uh, died, unfortunately, in a very tragic choking accident. Um, but yeah, like, because that's the thing I think of, because I'm thinking like um, the Austin Powers joke about her is how I knew about that. God. Uh, ever heard of the song California Dreaming by chance? Like the, all the leaves no. are brown, like that one. No. Okay. There, <laughs> I, just stop. Just stop. Yeah, well, I, they won't I, I get can't. it if they there's, don't get it. There's nothing. There's nothing I can say. I appreciate um, the effort. Yeah. Uh, regardless. Uh, yeah. So she is a like yes, very prim and proper. Uh, she walks up and Bobby extends his hand. Around. Welcome, madam. Do you like what I've done with the place? Just because I don't think we've ever really described what Bobby's restaurant looks like. Have you ever been, y'all ever been inside a Texas Roadhouse before? Yes, yeah. I have. Oh my fucking yes. god. Yes. Does it have, does it have the bull? Yes. Go ahead. Yes, it's like Texas Roadhouse, but all the cowboy paraphernalia is pictures and statues of Bobby. I, <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to sideline. You're good. And for Halloween, he's put up Halloween decorations on top of I can the only stuff. imagine there's at least one picture of him in a tied off button up in Daisy Dukes in a cowboy hat. There's a picture of him with two lads dressed like that. <laughs> um I so another sideline I did um I hate the fact that there is a Texas Roadhouse near me. Uh, that is literally right next to like it's in front of our mall actually. 
uh, there's a tech, uh, a Texas Roadhouse that is in the space next to a Longhorn Steakhouse. And I hate because like there's been multiple times where I'm meeting someone and just getting confused about which place we're actually going. That's the thing I think of when I think of Texas Roadhouse. Y- yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, so yes. Uh, and it's like ah, uh, yes. It's a very quaint uh, um, atmosphere you've uh, got here. Well, it's just in time for the spooky season. Well, come, let me show us show you to our table. Uh, she walks uh to uh, yeah. She walks um up to the table. Yes, a couple of associates of mine wish to be here as well. May I introduce Claudia Lupin? Hello. And Claudia's just, like, looking up, just because, like, Claudia's 4'8", so... Just surrounded by tall women. (laughs) And this is Aravia. Aravia stands up and goes in for a handshake. Uh, She just extends her hand. And just kind of, I guess, shakes. Aravia like, needs what? to prove dominance. A pleasure uh, to meet you all. I take it this, you are all Theron's team. Or Some at least of part them. of it? And I know I am, I guess. Yep. Well, um, I guess, uh, I guess, uh, Theron must be looking forward to getting, or I guess, really, um, I guess is we willing to kind of accept, I, interesting that, uh, Getting this all together, even though we haven't really decided on anything yet. I guess that's a yeah. good look for me. That's why we're here, to iron out the details. Mr. Farron will be joining us eventually, but uh, for now we will have a brief discussion. Might as well meet the crew before you sign on to know what you're getting into. That is a fair yeah. point. That said, we are nothing but lovely and well-behaved people, so you don't need to worry. A shame. What do you mean a shame? Ha! Ah, ha! Uh, that's a lie. I could have, uh... You know, when you're dealing with the kind of things that we're dealing with, prim and proper doesn't really seem to be... I never said prim and proper. This is true. Don't put words in my mouth. Or I should say a... Let's just say a more interesting take, I guess, is more... I'm not looking for straight-laced... I mean, it comes if you were looking kind of for straight job. lace, you wouldn't involve Bob B anyway. Hmm, I suppose. Just, uh, Veravia leans in close to her ear and just goes, like, believe me, that man is like a sleaze elemental. Uh, <laughs> she just sits there, it's like, she just kind of sits and just kind of does like the, like, a, hmm, okay. Probably just, just smiles and shakes his head and says, Oh, this cow. She says all kinds of things. What does that mean? You want to fight? There we go. Now you're seeing the actual dynamic. But anyway, allow Bobby to get us some menus. And he heads off to the bar. All right. Well, Linda's sitting with Aravia and Claudia. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I guess uh, my name is Lind. I am a researcher into relics by trade. Uh, although I will... One? What was that? You ever meet one? No, and that's what I'm trying to fix. Oh, really? Wow, that's... Huh. Never met a relic. You're really missing uh, out. Well, that's what I'm trying to fix. See, I've met... And once again, just a Ravi goes to counter fingers and just goes, oh, fuck, I... Um, not enough fingers. Just They're lovely like, people. I suppose they will be. Can't believe you've never can't believe you've never met a relic. I don't think it was well, that hard. Well, the thing is, a lot of my uh, work so far has been mostly uh, academic in nature. Uh, trying to get a little bit out into the field is kind of what I'm trying to do at the moment. Man, you really got to travel more. I probably should. Yes. And man, even Lila's met a relic. Oh, is she uh, another one of your crew? Mm, she's an associate. Got any good gossip? I don't uh, know which uh, 
I don't, I have not met her. So do you, I, I mean, just a, a Lila. It's like, I, I, I know your situation. Don't you fucking lie to my face. I don't know what you're talking about. I know you're her ex. Lila. Wait, for the record, uh, she does not know that she is in this. She lives here. Oh, well, this is going to make it all the more fun then. Oh no. Here, here, oh, no. You were, here you were chastising me for ruining things. <laughs> uh, my, wait, my ex, what? Does Slava Moore live here? Yeah. She's so getting this... involved with looking into things. Um, yeah. Well, I might have to pay her a visit. Well, you see, and then Aravia just uh, takes out a pen, starts writing on a napkin. Uh, you can meet her here. This is where she lives. She, no, excuse Stop. me, this is where she works. Uh, she takes it and looks like, oh, Lila, Lila. Getting into the getting into the standard history stuff. We're going to need a museum. I mean, at least she's met a relic, unlike you. She just gives you a very, like, side-eyed, like, uh, this is where you can see that she is getting a little bit more animated. <laughs> Look, man, relics are everywhere. You just need to know where to find them. If there's anyone who knows how to find them, it's me. I found at least, and once again, she just starts counting her fingers and just goes, fuck, I don't know. I, I lost count. Uh, just that's like a quick aside to get the bar business over. Yeah. All right. Bobby heads over to the bar, uh, gets one of the waitresses to head over to the table to bring uh, menus, and uh, <clears throat> he sits down next to Theron and says... Oh, can you hear everything all right? Uh, yes, I, I I can hear just fine. Good. We want you to miss out on anything. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, well, wasn't intending for this to happen, but, uh, well, I'll give you a signal when you should head over, if things go well. All right. Uh, he says to the bartender, Gomez... Make sure Mr. Pendragon here is well taken care of. Uh, the bartender kind of nods. All right, then. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go undo the damage Aravi is doing. All right. It's back to the table. All right. So at this point, Claudia is looking mortified at the fact that <laughs> what Aravi has done. Aravi just strolls up to the table with a big smile on his face, pretending to be oblivious as to everything that just happens as well oh, looks like a spirit discussion's been happening here uh yes it has look i was but just y'all... talking to you about relics oh what kind of relics no just in general i mean apparently she's never met one even though like even her ex has met one her ex yeah apparently she she didn't realize lila lives here oh you're familiar with miss moore are you yes i am uh, we are former classmates. Lovers. If you can call it that. Oh my. How salacious. Oh yeah, yes. speaking of speaking of relics, Mr. Pendragon told me that you were most interested in them. Yes, I am. Uh I've been looking into uh several places in this region because it seems like I've been noticing some spikes in the kind of vicinity of, like, let's just say the 20-mile radius uh, of this area. And I've been noticing a series of signatures that uh, indicates that there's actually quite a few relics in the area, although I haven't been able to find any yet, or rather pinpoint where they are. Maybe they don't want to be found. Do you have any idea of their general region? Um, well, um, I have, it might be easier if we saw, uh, at one point, uh, if you come to my house and we look at, uh, the maps that I have, because I didn't bring them because I have quite a, many of them, this is not exactly the place to bring those, uh, here, but, um, yeah, I believe that, uh, I have found, um, quite a few. I've found, well, I've been able to pinpoint in particular four 
in the region. Uh, I have found surprisingly only one within the Steinwald region, or the Steinwald uh, greater area. Um, I have found one within, or I have found uh, two within Oakbrook, uh, which is right around where a house is, and I found one with that is somewhere within Hazeltown. Oh. Uh, any other specifics? Um, the Steinwald one, uh, nothing in particular. They don't seem to be sticking to one particular location. Um, in particular, I've seen the uh, one that I've uh, noted that in Hazeltown has been going in quite a few different... Uh, it seems to be moving around quite a bit. A few locations within Hazeltown, some within the Steinwald. Um, so it's been hopping around anywhere, so I have not had a really good lead on it. Uh, the two that are within Oakbrook, uh, seem to be, uh, or one with, um, hold on. Actually, no, I just got that back. Two within the Steinwald. Um, uh, the one that I found, one of the, uh, ones in Steinwald have just kind of, it's been active and then inactive in a very weird pattern that I haven't quite fully traced. Um, oh, most curious. Uh, and then there's one that's pretty active and has been moving around in various circumstances. And that one has been interesting because that one, I think I have been pretty close to figuring out where it is, but I am not 100% certain. And the one with an Oprah it's weird. It's stationary, but I can't figure out where the signal is coming from. Hmm. Most curious. Well, then, I suppose that out of the way, what exactly is it you want from us? Well, I would like some help to figure out where they are. Uh, what do hmm. you intend to do with them? Well, first off, I would like communication with them uh, and to record their... I guess, sense of being like, I want to essentially interview them and just figure out like where they came from and who came into possession of them and how. And that's all I would like to say. Well, I guess it depends upon the stature of whether or not the relic themselves feels comfortable with their spot. But if they're comfortable, then I'm comfortable. Okay, good. I won't need to beat you up. I, I really, I, my family has been looking into this for centuries, and if... Yeah, only 500 I, years, it's whatever. Well, yes. Um, but I really wouldn't want to do harm to any of these things. These things are fascinating creatures, and I really... And they're people, too. Yes, actually, that is a, probably a better way of phrasing it, but yes, they are people. And I want to respect their boundaries, although... If it turns out that one is perhaps in, let's say, the not exactly the greatest home, then perhaps freeing them might also be of uh, our personal interest. You can just see the tension leave, Aravia. It's like, good, good, good. Okay, you respect them. Good. Ugh. I don't need to beat you up. Good. She jests, of course. No. Such I, violence taken... is not allowed. Such violence is not allowed in my establishment. And okay, we take this. it outside. Yeah, exactly. I'll just take it out back. It's fine. Look, ma'am, I, I, I've at this point, I've almost taken it upon myself to help out any sort of magical people or creatures in the area. So, best be respecting them. Uh, Lynn just gets a grin on her face. It's like, well, then, that's good to hear. You ever talk to a sylph, Lynn? She just kind of looks and is like, I haven't. You should try it sometime. See, they can't, Bobby. she just points to everyone around her. They can't talk to them. And I think they're weird for it, but. I can't do the joke because it's not on this here. Ah. Bobby just uh, smiles and gives a Ravia warning look. Anyway, um, she just kind of is like, you know what? What the hell? You only live once. I think I will hire your team to help me out with uh, trying to locate these relics. Hmm. 
Well, that's interesting to hear. But first, Bobby has to know, what do you offer in return? Well, I guess, um, I mean, I'm willing to pay. I have access mm. to paying it, but... Um, I mean, cash is nice, but I know Theron also had something in mind. Yes. Oh, what, does he? Yes, what can you tell us about your efforts in match scripting? Ah, uh, yes, I suppose Theron has talked to us about that, yeah. Um, he's, he's a huge nerd. So yes, our house is almost, you can consider, not quite a relic, it's not living. But there is knowledge hidden in this house that has been stored throughout the various other houses that this family's had. There's been at least 20 uh, going back centuries. Uh, and I believe... Ever. But yes. Um, I've talked to Theron about my things in magic scripting, and he said that you at your team also has had experience with magic scripted items? Of a sort. We wish... We've encountered a few, and... Uh... Yeah, we wish to better improve said items. So, um, what is your price? You help me. How do I help you? Well, as you said, cash and information. Well, if you can uh, figure out what information you're looking for, then I can see if whether or not that's a fair price, or figure out what a fair price would be. I think I think Theron would be the one to discuss that with more than anyone. Indeed he would, but would you be willing to make this deal? Depends upon what the terms of the deal are. Oh. In that case, Bobby gives Theron the signal. All right. Uh, okay, so if Theron comes over and to spare you me talking to myself, <laughs> uh, you discuss the deal that basically if you're, if you all find the relics that she's looking into... Um, she will give you access to her house for whatever, what you would need it for. Um, and in that case, uh, she would agree that that is a fair deal. So you do in fact have, so basically that you agree to, yeah, what the, what the deal is. Excellent. Well, a fine deal then. He picks up many and says, well, everyone order up then. I recommend our Halloween special, the Bar Gas Burger. No, uh, you're paying for all this? Of course. Ravi just orders the most expensive burger on the menu. And Claudia struggles and tries to find the closest thing to a vegetarian option. <laughs> oh, poor Claudia. Well, they have vegan burgers. Yeah, I figure I figured Bob B would at least be inclusive. Bob B feeds all kinds of people. I figure it's less it's less out of like just trying to navigate the menu because this isn't a place Claudia normally would stop by. No burger joints for her. How sad. Thank you for listening to Hazeltown Story. If you'd like to get updates on this show and many other shows hosted by me, Lola Puzzle, you can follow at Hazeltown Story on Twitter, and if you would like to get know me or from a personal standpoint you can follow my personal twitter at lola de puzzle if you would like to watch this be recorded live you can go to twitch.tv slash lola puzzle and follow the channel for notifications of when this show as well as other shows like retro rank rhapsody are being recorded if you would like to add this podcast to your podcatcher of choice you can search for wldp hazeltown radio and find us on most major podcatching search engines or you can manually add rss.hazeltown.life to your podcatcher. Thank you for listening, and I hope you come around for the next episode. <laughs>